in this week's Shredded Sports Science. Shredded Sports Science, spin that around a bit, fade to black. You'll hear the word pyramids, reverse pyramids, and all sorts of mad science when it comes to structuring your sets for muscle growth. I'm about to make that even more complicated by discussing pyramids, double pyramids, reverse pyramids, and flat pyramids. Basically all the pyramids. Fist bump. Svartsnegger.com has an article on pyramid training, didn't read it. Unless the governator himself is writing it, didn't read it. Thank you for those of you who watched my last video. The comments section was truly intriguing with a mixture of responses, many positive responses for chiropractic medicine and many people who are very much against it. I'm truly humbled by the quality of input under that video and some funny jokes too. If you don't want to watch me talking about pyramid sets for muscle growth, simple, don't. To the 1% of anonymous hard men who give me abuse under every single video, keep throwing your toys out of the pram, makes no difference. To the other 99% of you in this community, thank you so much for everything. Pyramid training, effectively, it's where you use different amount of repetitions and weight for each set for the same exercise, and it will look a little something like this. And so when it comes to pyramids, I instantly think about the benefit of using multiple rep ranges you're going to work different muscle fibers, the type one and type two muscle fibers. By using these lighter loads and higher repetitions, you're able to work those repeated dynamic contractions for muscle hypertrophy. But also by using heavier weight within the pyramid protocol, you're able to dig into those type two muscle fibers, those more explosive power oriented muscle fibers, which react to a heavier load. Those muscle fibers are essentially born to hypertrophy, born to grow. And so that's an additional benefit. Pyramid training is basically the shopping mall of fitness, an all-in-one inclusive protocol for muscle building. But as with everything, there's those upsides and also those pesky downsides to it. And in this video, I'm going to reference Thibardo. That took many takes. Let's call him Tib. Don't have to agree with every word that he says. You don't have to agree with his choice of interview host either. We need a wee chat about that, Tib. But again, and most importantly, think critically, analyze and apply to yourself. And I think it's useful to present different thinkers into exercise science within a YouTube channel. And I've referenced Tib in many older videos and I get new subscribers asking about him. And you may not have seen some of my older videos with the inaudible microphone, terrible presentation and awful lighting. Exercise selection. Who the f was that guy? Looks like a turnip who's had too much hyphy mud. Specificity is vital to any concept. And to be clear, this video is about pyramid training for the goal of muscle growth, not for athletic performance, not for specific strength gains, for muscle hypertrophy, i.e. the increase of sarcomeres in parallel. And so please, with any concept, understand that it has to be attributed to a specific goal. And this video is for muscle growth. And so let's start with a key piece of information. You can build muscle using multiple rep and set ranges. You can absolutely build muscle with lower set, lower rep, higher intensity, heavier loads. You can build muscle with moderate weight and moderate reps. You can build muscle with a higher rep range and lower weight. As long as you have progressive overload and consistency in your training, you can absolutely build muscle. However, when we think about muscle growth and the fact that it is the repeated dynamic contractions, the repeated stress on these muscle fibers that helps to initiate muscle hypertrophy. This statement is very applicable. Whether low reps or moderate reps evoke a greater hypertrophic response has been a matter of debate and both produce significant gains in muscle growth. However, there is a prevailing belief that a moderate range of approximately six to 12 reps optimizes the hypertrophic response. Current research suggests that maximum gains in muscle hypertrophy are achieved by training regimens that produce significant metabolic stress while maintaining a moderate degree of muscle tension. A hypertrophy oriented program should employ a repetition range of 6 to 12 reps per set with rest intervals of 60 to 90 seconds between sets. Exercises should be varied in a multi-planar, multi-angled fashion to ensure maximal stimulation of all muscle fibers. And so that's a common sense application of a decent muscle building range and protocol. Pyramid training. In a regular pyramid, you start with a higher number of reps and a lesser amount of weight. And with each set, you increase the weight while reducing the reps. In an inverted pyramid, you do the opposite. You start with a heavy weight for a few reps and decrease the load with each set while increasing the reps. And this can also be known as a reverse pyramid and Kino Body is someone that promotes this, which is a perfectly legitimate, valid approach to use. That's the only one you get Kino Body. And so what you're gonna notice as I go through pyramid training is that there are different names for the same protocols. It doesn't matter. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. And here's a very interesting protocol called the double pyramid, or also known as the descending ascending pyramid. And so with this protocol, you start with the higher rep range, the lighter weight, and you work your way down to lower reps and heavier weights. And then you reverse it again and, and move from 
the lower reps up to the higher reps with the lighter weight. And so here is the key point of the video, the really key information as to you applying whether or not you're going to use pyramid training. And if you do choose to use pyramid training, what variation of it you may want to use. Here's the gold dust. There are two problems with pyramid loading schemes. They either cause too much fatigue to make the heavy set effective the regular pyramid scheme. So if you think about a regular pyramid, you're starting with higher repetitions, lower weight, and then you work your way down to the heavier set. One problem with this is by using those higher repetitions, you may be fatigued tired by the time you get to that heavier set. And so you may not perform well or effectively with that heavier set. This also has safety implications to it. Of course, when it comes to heavier compound lifts, safety is absolutely vital. And so this is also a negative of pyramid training for some people. If you are a complete beginner, especially with the exercise execution of heavier compound sets, then pyramids are most likely not for you because of course you want to develop your competency with the compound lifts. You don't want to fatigue your muscle with a lift and then go into a heavier set of that lift. And the other problem with pyramids that Tib states, start heavy too soon when the central nervous system is not properly activated i.e. inverted pyramids. And so one way to counteract the disadvantage from regular pyramids and the fatigue is by using a reverse pyramid because you start with a heavier set. So you're not fatigued when you start with the heavier set. The problem with that method, however, is that your central nervous system may not be appropriately prepared for that set. And so when we think about the best of both worlds, what protocol do we use then with these advantages and disadvantages? Well, Tib recommends the double pyramid. And of course, you're still going to have issues, but it kind of gives you the best of both worlds if you're using this descending ascending pyramid. But of course, there is still the potential for a level of fatigue as you get to that heavier set. And so essentially, pyramid training has a serious flaw to it. And indeed, Tibaldo is not so much of a fan. And he says this, the double pyramid, which is somewhat similar to wave loading, is less problematic and should be the preferred pyramid pyramid pattern if one chooses to use one. And so although no method is perfect, that is a reasonable way that you can program to try and counteract and try and balance some of the disadvantages from different pyramid training protocols. And here's a further idea, and it's called flat pyramid training. And there's probably a flat earth joke in there somewhere. My usual comedians comment down below. This method is somewhat similar to pyramid loading in that the load is progressively increased with each set. However, the number of reps stay the same. This means that only the last one to two sets are actually true work sets, while the other two to three are progressive warm-ups. They still have a training effect though. And here's an interesting point that he relates to Dorian Yates. This is the type of loading scheme used by Dorian Yates. It's often believed that Yates trained using a hit or heavy duty program in which one performs only one set of an exercise to failure. This is not so. Yates actually performed up to five sets of an exercise, but only the last one was a true limit effort. This method is interesting when training in the functional hypertrophy zone because it allows one to get his central nervous system and muscles geared up for a limit effort effort gradually without causing too much fatigue. And so with all things, there are trade-offs, there are negatives. I've discussed many of them. Another disadvantage of pyramid training is the setup between sets. You're having to change the plates on the bar. This can be difficult, especially if you're in a busy gym, for example, and that guy in the corner is trying to nick your bench. However, a benefit of it is that it may be exciting for you. It may be interesting to use different reps and different weights on each set for an exercise, and that may help with your training adherence. That can be an intangible benefit. As with anything, please take this video, disregard what doesn't apply to you, disregard the rubbish, probably me. And maybe some of you watching this may now want to apply some pyramid training into your yearly training cycle. After all, we train over our active lifetimes. And so of course we can change up what we are doing. Change equals adaptation after all. I cannot cover every single issue in relation to pyramid training in one video. To do that would take multiple, multiple hours of content. And even then you still can't cover everything as there's so many different schools of thoughts into concepts and research is consistently developing. However, what I try to do is give my best effort to communicate digestible, analytical, information, giving pros and cons to you that you do not have to accept or use. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you ideas around a subject, the benefits, the cons, which you must apply to yourself. Some of, For some of you, you may want to use some of this information in your training. For some of you, you may completely disregard it. Both of those are absolutely valid as when it comes to our training, it's specific to us. We are all different. We all have unique characteristics. I'm not a high-level lifting coach. I never give 
lifting tutorials on this channel. There are better channels for that. Finished. So how would you like to make money? This is how it works. I recruit you and then you recruit three people. And the more people we can recruit to sell this product, the more money we make.